I've noticed that for a lot of people, rising interest rates is uh, it's making some people nervous because a few of you have your own home um, and you're thinking, hey, my, my mortgage is going up and what am I going to do about it? For some people, they're actually pretty excited about rising interest rates because they feel like it is um, a time to be buying investment properties, in, as in to say that it's they were seeing some discounting. So I'm eager to talk about this because there's so, so much that we're going to uncover. Um, the good news is that I don't think that it's all doom and gloom. Hey, Kej, welcome, welcome. Hey, Carla, um, appreciate all your support. We'll just give it another minute, then I'll kick off. Now, what I want to do in this live talk is cover three main topics I have prepared. Um, I'm going to talk about the a bit of history with interest rates, and I want to do a little bit of review of where they are today. Um, I want to talk about what it all means and then what you can anticipate. Um, someone's asking to go live with me and um, how to respond. So... To kick it all off, the just Tuesday that passed, we've noticed our interest rates basically rose 0.5%. And that brought the cash rate up to 0.5%. Now, it's, it's not huge, but it is certainly significant, especially since we haven't seen a rate rise since 2010. So it's been more than a decade since we've seen a rate rise, and that's making a lot of people nervous. Um, some people were teenagers a decade ago. Now, for a little bit of perspective, um, since January 1990, the average interest rate in Australia has been about 3.93%. And for a bit of context, back in 1990, January, the interest rate was 17.5%. So it's, it's come a long way since then. We've come from 17.5% in 1990, and now we're looking at basically an average rate of 3.93. Where we are today is 0.85%. Um, Steph, I'll answer the first thing uh, at the end of the video. And it's been 0.1% since basically November 2020. So for a lot of people, they don't know, um, they haven't experienced higher interest rates. They've been sitting at 0.1%. And for the bank rate, that's basically meant they've bought their house at 2%, 2.1%, 2.2%. Now, by the end of this year, um, many experts are talking about interest rates rising um, as much as 2% or being at 2, 2.5%. So that means for you as a borrower or as a homeowner, your bank rate is going to be between 2 and 3% more than that. So you're looking at having bank rates up at maybe 4, 5%, 4.5%. And for a lot of people, that's scary. And I can actually, I can really empathize with you. If you've gone out over the past two years and bought a home for, you know, a million, $2 million, and you've, you've got that much debt, at 2% and now you're suddenly facing it going up to four, that's incredibly scary because you're going from say $20,000 a year in interest to now $40,000 a year in interest, which is um, doubling what you anticipate, which is significant. I'm getting a lot of people here that are asking to talk about Perth. Today we're talking about interest rates and we will come to Perth. So let's talk about what this means, this rising interest rates and what, what impact it's going to have practically on the market. Well, first and foremost, it basically means we've got um, rising cost of debt. Now with the rising cost of debt, that basically means that it's gonna be more expensive to buy your own home. It's going to be more expensive to buy an investment property. So with that, typically when you see rising interest rates, Interest rates may be rising, but it's currently stuck in the mud. Yeah, I don't know what that means. But with rising interest rates, it basically means there's going to be less purchases in the market. And we've seen that over the past couple of months, Australia-wide, there has been a slowdown in the growth rate. There has been, in some markets, in Sydney, it's starting to actually go down, uh, down in price. Only by 1%. 
but that's just across the, the Sydney market. So with the change in demand, we're seeing less people come into the market, um, but also a shift. Our wealthy money team have done the a property that they purchase. So what that means for the property market is there's going to be a lot of people that will be not buying property, but also there's going to be a shift in demand. People are going to start shifting from um, spending, say, a million dollars to maybe nine hundred thousand, maybe eight hundred thousand dollars. And what that actually also means is that there's going to be a a shift in what people would like to buy, and with that there's going to be opportunities for that bottom part of the market. But before we get to that, I want to talk about where the fact that with these rising interest rates, that isn't necessarily all doom and gloom. So between 2002 and 2008, we had a really interesting time. Interest rates basically grew from about 4.2% to about 7.2%. So that's a 3% rise in interest rates. And during that time, we saw property prices increase by 50%. So I guess that's one way of saying that's, that's one small anecdote, but it's not all doom and gloom. I think that currently there's a big shock to the market that rates are rising. We're going to see a lot of mortgage pressure. We're going to see a lot of mortgage stress. It's certainly becoming a buyer's market. And what that actually means is that there's going to be a lot of deals and there's, got a lot of, there's going to be a lot of opportunities um, in the market. So let's talk about now what to look for and how to respond. I had some commenters say that they've got a mortgage, $1.2 million worth of debt. They're basically nervous. They're spending 30% of their income on their mortgage. And my heart goes to you. Um, this is pretty normal. Most Australians spend about 30% of their income on their mortgage or on rent. Um, and in fact, some people go up to about 50%, which is a lot of money. Now, as we said earlier, there's going to be a shift. Less people are going to be buying property. And what that typically means is there's going to be more pressure on the rental system. With less people buying property, there's going to be a lot more people looking to rent. So there is an opportunity there. I guess what the opportunity is in this market is to be investing in real estate rather than buying your own home in many instances. And the reason why I say that is because I've been talking to a lot of friends, family and clients where previously they were looking at buying a one, one and a half million dollar home. Um, they've now reconsidered and thought, hey, with interest rates going up, my wage isn't necessarily going up that fast. Now, with wages not going up that fast and with households potentially having one in uh, two incomes going down to two, it's a lot of pressure on someone buying their own home. But if you're buying an investment, if you're buying an affordable investment out in the market, and you're watching rents rise, that gives you a massive opportunity. It means you just got to shift to maybe buying something that is affordable, buying in a market where you're going to see rising rents, and you can take advantage of that. So I suppose this really is a buyer's market. So if you've got a good deposit, you've got a strong income, and you feel confident about your rental income, it's a good time to be hunting. It's a really good time to be hunting. The property market split into three main categories. You've got the top 25%, the bottom 25%, and then the middle 50%. The middle 50 and the top uh, 25 have started to slow down. We're starting to see a lot of discounting where we're seeing pressure on, on uh, mortgage pressure. So if you've got the budget, you're going to find some deals over there. For the bottom part of the market, the bottom 25% of the market, you're still seeing that there's a bit of growth. You're also seeing that's outperforming other, other the middle and top parts of the markets nationwide. 
Now, that bottom part of the market is typically comprised of, it's affordability, first and foremost, but it's comprised of apartments, townhouses, and then homes that are on the fringes. And that's defined by two key things, density, that's apartments, townhouses, and distance. These are properties that are, depending on what city, 30, 40, 50 kilometers from the CBD. So there's something else now that we want to be discussing. And we are certainly talking about interest rates. That's the hot topic. But I don't want you all to get caught up on that one thing, the, that the fact that debt is going to be more expensive. If you're out there, it's becoming a buyer's market. So if you're out there looking for real estate, keep the fundamentals uh, close to your chest. Make sure that the property kits all the key fundamentals. Make sure that you're looking for places where there's strong population growth, where there's investments in infrastructure, where you're close to economic centers, there's a lot of employment opportunities and there's low levels of supply. So... Our hot tip at Wealthy is if you're looking out in the market, we're going for affordable properties that have strong income growth, where there's really good opportunities for the market to change over time. During this opportunity, during this um, economic cycle, the government's stepping forward and they're inviting more migrants into the country. So they're wanting more people to come back in. During COVID, we had we lost about 160,000 people. And they anticipate that over the next couple of years, it's going to go to 150,000 people coming back in, about 200,000 people coming in 2023, and then 24, about 220,000 people. That's hundreds of thousands of people coming into the Australian economy looking for opportunities to live and to work. So as an investor, we're following where are the key markets that all of these migrants are coming into. The other thing is we're starting to see tourism coming back as well as students. These are all pressure on, this is all pressure on the, um, the property market. When tourists come back in, Airbnb gets sucked back up. When students come back into the market, they're all looking to rent as well. Hold on a second here. Let's have a look. If your equity has dropped 20K only, are you better off staying and renovating? Um. You're talking about renovating your own home. I don't think that it's a good idea to be increasing your debt on your own home. It's non-deductible debt. And unless that 20K that you're spending is going to increase the income on that property, I wouldn't be doing that. Now, back to what I was saying there and, and what you've pointed to is a really, really good point. Property investors um, at the moment have not... Really, they've been buying property and largely it's been positively geared. Now, going into this rising interest rate environment, we're going to see more of the property market becoming negatively geared. And what that means for a lot of people is if you're, um, you're working with your tax accountant, you've got your depreciation schedules and all everything in order, you're actually going to be able to claim a lot more money back from the tax man. So you can use this rising interest rate environment to your advantage. With rising interest, uh, rising interest rates, you've got rising rents. But even though if it's still a little bit negatively geared, you can still use that to your advantage and get the tax man to pay a part of that property that you're, you're paying off. So look, I want to open up to questions. That's all of my key topics that I've basically touched on today. Um, just to summarize, don't get too scared about this rising interest rate environment. We've seen these in the past. We're going from really, really, really low interest rates to really low interest rates. Um, even if they get up to 2.5%, it's not crazy. The long-term average is about that 3.8%, 3.9%. So we're still well below the long-term average. And the opportunities that we're seeing is to be going for affordable investments that have strong income growth and the fundamentals are all good and they're all there. So if you're, you've got any more questions, if you've got any concerns, you're interested in investing in real estate, you're interested in potentially reviewing your mortgage because you're scared that you may not have the right structures in place, um, reach out to the team. We've got a, um, a comment here. Can we claim depreciation on 40-year-old unit? No major work done. 
I'm un- unfortunately no. I'd say you probably need to go and talk to a quantity surveyor. There may still be some some depreciation in there, but that's very unlikely. Um, the way that depreciation works on the building is you can typically depreciate it by two and a half percent over a 40 year period. Um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, then I'll just go back into the comments here in Perth for an investment property. So when it comes to looking at proper markets and where to invest, it comes down to your budget. It also comes down to your goals. I will say that the Perth property market is, um, it's for a specific strategy. I'd say that it's more for a income strategy. Perth is one of the strongest rental yielding markets in Australia. It typically rents at about an average of 4.4% gross rental yields. Some markets will rent at 5, 5.5%, which is which is very good. But on the flip side, it doesn't typically grow as quick as some other markets. You know, just to do a quick comparison, Perth basically has a long-term average over 30 years, grows at about 4% where Sydney grows at about six, and that's for apartments um, and houses. Whereas from a rental yield perspective, Perth yields at about four and a half, as I just said, and Sydney yields at about two and a half to three percent. Now for specific markets, you can go two ways. One way is you can go stay close to CBD, stay close to the, um, I like to, I prefer to say close to the water or close to the CBD or places where you've got some really good aesthetic beauty culture, lifestyle, but with that, you've got to pay a bit of a premium or I go the other way and that's move out away from the CBD, still stay close close to the close line, buy cheap, get really affordable properties and get really strong rental returns. I think that's where you're going to get um, where the best parts are to invest in WA. If you want to know specific suburbs, reach out to the wealthy team. Hey, Paul. Thanks for joining. We're just wrapping up today's live stream. Um, Thanks for all of your questions. You've been awesome. I hope you've got some value out of today and you're not panicking too much about rising interest rates. And I hope some of you have been inspired to get out there and start um, property hunting. Good luck with all of your investing and um, we'll see you all soon.